coming to uh, 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 to my talk uh, today, and uh, it's an honor that actually I was uh, asked by uh, uh, Professor Raif, the director of the Nano uh, Nano Science of the uh, UC of Malaya, uh, uh, to to uh, to update about uh, my research, uh, my current research here. And uh, <clears throat> I'm, my name is uh, Thieu Gan Ong and uh, original I'm coming from Malaysia. Uh, now currently I work at uh, Taipei uh, as a research fellow <coughs> at Academia Sinica. Uh, uh, so I uh, will start. And uh, before I start my talk here, I kind of uh, want to uh, give my appreciation to the funding coming from uh, Academia Sinica, um, uh, as well as the, <coughs> the Ministry of Science and Technology of uh, Taiwan that provide me this uh, uh, funding that allow me to uh, do some basic science in uh, organometallic. I think as a scientist here, I, I show you this uh, uh, actually a painting that uh, Columbus it's a painting that uh, the first time the Christopher Columbus actually uh, arrived in the new land, so-called uh, America. And I, I think important here, I want to show that, um, that as uh, scientists, and sometimes you have to be very stubborn or persistent about what you are doing, right? Uh, in order to achieve your goal. Uh, uh, here that you can see Christopher Columbus at that time, um, he believed that, you know, uh, that if you go from to the West, right, uh, rather than to East, perhaps you can, uh, uh, you can uh, find the Asia, right? That's, that is the idea here, but uh, of course he did not actually uh, find the Asia, the land of Asia, but they actually eventually find a new land. I think sometime doing science, um, you might uh, actually find something unexpected. So uh, I, I think uh, that's why I think uh, about uh, the interesting about the science here. All right, so uh, I will start my, uh, my science uh, or my chemistry here. Uh, my research interest, basically, I like to make a strain chemical bonding, uh, particularly the carbon bond. Um, so as you know, the most stable carbon bond is the uh, electron or the carbon four. Sometimes we call it as alkane, as you see that the, they have these uh, four valent or the four bonding, which uh, they achieve the octet rule. And, um, my work here is generally in all the carbon two or the carbon zero here. Okay, the carbon two is a, a six electron carbon or we call carbon, six electron carbon, which is not very stable. Uh, and then uh, subsequently we are also interested, like for example, like the carbon zero or the four electron uh, carbon, we call it as a carbon. So we, we are interested the carbon and the carbon, two of these carbon species are actually is a, is a non octet uh, carbon, right? So, uh, but the, 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 the in interesting thing about this uh, carbon to the carbon or the carbon that they are very good as a platform to support the catalysis and uh, some of the material chemistry as well as some of the main group uh, chemistry here. So uh, here I kind of like to, I mean, most of my work here is focused on the carbon zero or the carbon. And obviously I'm not the first person or the pioneer who actually uh, come up with this so-called uh, carbon zero. And uh, the carbon zero is actually uh, have the history that starting from this so-called uh, uh, carbon disphosphorine or the CDP, okay, uh, which is was isolated by Ramirez at that time in 1961. And uh, if you think about that, it could be uh, somehow uh, you can think about that as like, uh, as a coordination chemistry or the dative bond, which you have a center carbon with four electron, then stabilized by two triphenylphosphine, okay? 
Uh, this is uh, the uh, coordination of the dative bond, which is uh, invented or being uh, come out by this uh, uh, Gano Franklin, the theoretician, that they're using the dative bond theory or the coordination uh, chemistry to uh, describe the bonding situation of the carbon zero. And uh, obviously this is a very controversy theory because uh, some of the people might not like it because there's, uh, at that time, there's a, like Louis Valen theory, right? Which you have two, uh, this uh, carbon uh, form uh, this cumulin bond or the two double bond with the phosphine. Or you could also look at this in the way that this uh, carbon zero or the carbon could be behave like a double helix, right? Which mean you have two negative charge that uh, concentrate or located at the center carbon, but you have generated a positive charge on this uh, triphenyl uh, phosphine here. And with this idea here, um, uh, and then subsequently, uh, Geno Franklin think about, perhaps you, you could also have these uh, two carbon stabilized uh, center carbon here. So the idea here is uh, that he think he believed that uh, this center carbon with the two lone pair here could uh, stabilize by the two carbon, and uh, obviously you can think about this uh, type of this carbon zero stabilized by two carbon could be actually look like a, a arlene, right? Uh, basically, if you take an arlene and you try to disrupt the pi. Uh, conjugation between this uh, system here, then perhaps you create or generate this electronic push-push, uh, so-called this uh, carbon zero here. And uh, how you do that, of course, you, 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 you want to uh, put very electron rich on this uh, uh, terminal carbon here uh, that will generate the electronic push-push, or you put a very very bulky R here, that will also uh, actually disrupt the uh, effective pi conjugation. And uh, with this uh, theoretical uh, analysis or the prediction uh, that uh, by the Gano Franklin, uh, after one year that they, they published this work here, uh, in two, 2008, uh, Guy Bertron have successfully actually used benzylated NAC carbon to stabilize this uh, carbon zero. So uh, this is the first uh, known uh, carbodicarbon, which uh, we call as a carbon zero. And, uh, but the problem by uh, the Bertrand at that time, uh, they also uh, found that this uh, uh, carbodicarbon have a two lone pair, is a very electron rich, and have this a very strong signal donor that actually can uh, coordinate to the matter. But the problem when we try to do this uh, chemistry, we found that uh, there's a solubility problem, okay? Because uh, this four methyl here on the metal here are uh, 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 two, it's not really a, a good uh, side arm that actually cause a uh, solubility uh, problem in organic solvent. And the other uh, problem, uh, or disadvantage about this uh, framework is that they don't have a diversity. Um, so, uh, you know, if you want to use this ligand or the framework to, to support the transition matter uh, catalysis, right, uh, you, you want to have different kind of framework so, so that you can uh, use different kind of framework to modulate the reactivity of the, this uh, transition matter. So, uh, my uh, postdoc, Eric Chen, or uh, uh, Wen Ching Chen, Dr. Wen Ching Chen. Um, he's a very talented uh, organic uh, chemist. So he, we, he come out a, a, a solution, a synthetic solution that basically you look at this uh, side arm here with a yellow uh, bulky here. Uh, we think that if we can do a modification on this uh, four uh, metal here, perhaps we can increase the solubility of this ligand in the organic sol uh, solution. So he come up two strategy here, very, very effective strategy. 
Uh, one strategy, uh, synthetic strategy is uh, this uh, C2 symmetry, carbon dicarbon, uh, which means uh, you have this blue color here. Uh, this means that this uh, carbon zero are supported by a similar uh, benzylated NAC or the, the carbon here. And then the other uh, synthetic strategy is so-called the C1 and symmetry CDC or the carbon dicarbon, which you have the center carbon zero are uh, supported by two different ligands here. Okay, we will start with this C2 symmetry uh, CDC synthesis here. We actually start with uh, using the uh, nit nitroamine to the hydrogenation uh, with the uh, palladium carbon calis here. They able to make the uh, he able to make the diamine. On the left side, what we need to do is we need to stand up. Uh, is it okay? Everything? Yes, bro. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought maybe somebody did not hear me. I'm, I'm sorry. All right, so uh, continue here. We he take the diamine treated with this uh, melonic ester, and then making this bridging compound here with a uh, very good yield, and then uh, then do a coordination with the iodomethane or the uh, or the <clears throat> or the uh, methyl triflate here. Then you can generate this carbon dicarbon precursor. Okay, so you have two proton, two proton on the center carbon. So, and then what he did is using a very strong base, remove these two proton here, and then you can get this uh, so-called the carbon dicarbon. And uh, the other strategy, this uh, C2 symmetry uh, uh, strategy uh, for this synthesis is basically you, you make a bridge, uh, a bridge, uh, compound here. But for the C1 uh, asymmetric synthesis here, basically it's a, a more like the SN2 reaction. You use a nuclear file of this uh, olefin NAC, react with the electrophile, which you have the tile as a living group, and then uh, SN2 reaction, and then you can construct an asymmetric uh, carbon dicarbon. And then again, you're using a strong base, you remove uh, the proton, on this center carbon, and then you can generate this uh, carbon zero with the two lone pair here. Okay, now um, uh, recently we also uh, come out another new strategy, which was uh, uh, was published uh, last year in Organometallic, that we also can actually not only can use two carbon to stabilize the carbon zero, but we also can uh, use a phosphine and the NAC or the NAC carbon to stabilize the uh, center carbon, as you see. And this work was done by my uh, recently just uh, graduate uh, PhD student, uh, uh, Dr. Liu, uh, which he uh, uh, coming from uh, Germany. Okay, so uh, here I want to show you the structure of this uh, carbon dicarbon. In fact, they are not really a linear aline here. You can see this is sort of like bent aline here. Uh, that you have the C1, C2, and C1 prime here is about the, the angle is uh, roughly about 136 instead of 180 degree here. And then uh, more important here, you, if you see this uh, red color plane here, uh, in general, you have the normal aline, right? The SP hybridization uh, aline here, in general, you, the plane should be 90 degree with each other. But uh, for the case of the carbon dicarbon, because this is a, a sort of like twisted or the, the band aline, right? Uh, this, uh, they are not normal anymore. So they actually, the plane is twisted from the 90 degree to uh, 71 degree here. And we also look at the electron uh, donating ability of this carbon dicarbon. We found that the so-called the TEP Tolman uh, electronic parameter is about uh, 2022 uh, or 2021 uh, per cent centimeter, which is very electron rich, uh, is much stronger single donor than the uh, normal carbon here. And how we do that? We, of course, we take this, our carbon dicarbon, bind to the rhodium here, and then we try to measure the IR stretching of this CO. And this IR stretching 
IR, uh, this uh, CO uh, stretching uh, in the IR will show us the value that will uh, allow us to understand the electron uh, donating ability of this uh, ligand here. All right, another uh, slide here, one to show you, this is actually a very electron rich skyfall of the framework here. Uh, I'll show you why, because when we take this uh, electron rich carbodicarbon react with the boring here, boring, which is a Lewis acid here, and we expected it should be from this Lewis acid based adduct here, or this so-called the 2B here, uh, a complex here. So nothing is so um, interesting, right? It's a routine reaction, but actually it turned out it doesn't actually generate this uh, routine compound or the Lewis acid based adduct 2B here. Instead, they generate this uh, very unique boring structure. This is an electron deficient uh, uh, boron structure with the dikaonic here, uh, which we have two carbodicarbon uh, stabilized this uh, boron, uh, electron deficient boron here. And I want to show you here that uh, most of this electron deficient boron with the dikaonic, generally they have a four coordinate, but uh, because of our ligand or the ligand one here or the carbodicarbon are so electron rich, they only need to have three uh, coordination instead of four coordination here. Okay, so uh, we, uh, we of course, uh, collaborate with one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Shi, uh, Shi Chaoping. Uh, she uh, helped us to uh, use a DFT calculation to show that actually the two lone pair are actually helping to uh, stabilize this electron deficient uh, boron here. All right, I will quickly switch gear. Uh, uh, previously, I mentioned about how to make this uh, carbon zero. Uh, uh, we show you three methods to synthesize this uh, uh, very special, unique uh, carbon zero. Now, uh, we also talk about how electron rich about the uh, carbodicarbon. Um, now, I kind of want to switch gear to uh, how we can use the carbodicarbon ligand to support some of the catalysis, especially uh, toward the goal of sustainability or the green chemistry here. All right, so um, I don't want to miss you or abuse the work of sustainability, but uh, of course we always want to move to the direction that uh, we could you know, play some role in sustainability because uh, we need to do something about our resources, right? The resources now getting depletion. And also we want to uh, uh, help to uh, maybe uh, do something with the CO2 here. All right. So one of the things I, I like to do a contribution in sustainability uh, it, of the sign is uh, the CO bond activation. Why we want to make a CO bond activation? Because uh, you can use CO bond activation to construct um, many chemical or many molecule, right? The problem, most of our molecule, organic molecule uh, is coming, the starting material is coming from the fossil fuel, right? So uh, now we need to find another alternative. So uh, biomass is probably is a, possible the uh, alternative that we can use biomass to actually make molecule. So you know that biomass, biomass that have lignin and cellulose that contain a lot of CO moiety or the CO bond. So uh, we want to exploit that possibility. So that's why I think the CO bond activation is very important here. And for the work here, um, uh, you can uh, look at some of the work by Chatani and Tobishu from uh, Osaka University that uh, they use nickel complex or catalyst to actually to, uh, do the CO bond activation. And then uh, treated with this green yard reagent, they can make a carbon-carbon cost coupling reaction. And uh, obviously in our, this work here, also you can actually not only do CO bond activation, you could actually incorporate the CH bond activation, which is another uh, method 
uh, uh, to uh, sustainability, sustainability, right? So in this case here, uh, you use this benzo or the hydro uh, atom here, which have the CH, then you do the CH activation or the CH privilege, uh, treated with this, uh, this ester, okay? And this, and this ester with the label with the CO-1 here, and you can do this carbon-carbon cost coupling. So basically this methodology is based on CH bond activation incorporated with the CO bond activation. And uh, you, if you're interested, there's a, a lot of paper by uh, Itami, uh, Jameson, Kay Kayani, uh, Martin from the Spain, uh, and she from China that they do a lot of this uh, tandem CH slash the CO bond activation. And but I, I want to mention all this work so far here is in war, uh, activated CO electrophile here. Okay. Um, so uh, you you see this all is like the amide, the ester here, right? And uh, and uh, this all is an activated uh, CO moiety here, right? Uh, but the, the problem is most of the biomass they contain this so-called this uh this uh, eater, the CO, like for example, like this uh this uh Matthew eater here, right? Uh this is not easy to break, right? So uh we knew you need to find a, a way to break that. So one way to break that is to use a nickel catalyst. Uh why they use a green yard because not only green yard can serve as a coupling partner, but they also could uh, use the magnesium as a Lewis acid that bind, well, have some sort of interaction with the oxygen here, and then this will weaken the CO bond. All right, so uh, here I'll show you quickly um, that we able to use our carbodicarbon uh, as a ligand to support the nickel zero complexes and then uh, to do the CH bond activation but with the very inert or, or very stable uh, this uh, uh, this uh, ether okay this uh, ether bond here right so we are able to construct the the carbon carbon cost coupling right so this is a CH uh, CO bond activation Right, and we could do a scope of substrate uh, with, like, for example, naphthalene, this anisole here, or uh, other polar aromatic. And we also can uh, look at uh, some of the CH. Um, uh, the molecule have the uh, rather uh, more uh, acidic CH here, like, for example, in my this uh, this, uh, this uh, indoor. Right, uh, or the uh, uh, this uh, um, this uh, imidopyridine, we, we can do that, right? So, so this is a very interesting, right? For the first time, we able to actually break the uh, inert CO with the incorporate with the CS bond activation for the first time, and I, I think the 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 trick here, okay, uh, not only we use uh, carbodicarbon as a ligand, but the important trick here, we introduce a uh, very bulky green yard reagent here, okay. This uh, very bulky green yard reagent, the idea here is not to serve as a coupling partner, but serve as a Lewis acid to help to activate the CO. And uh, in fact, we uh, seek uh, uh, help or the co we collaborate with one of uh, these uh, professor uh, from professor from Nanjing Tech University at China. Uh, she uh, she a very uh, talented uh, theoretician, uh, Lily Chao. Uh, that I uh, show you that you need uh, this uh, magnesium green yard or the Lewis acid like this magnesium here to uh, help to activate the CH as you see the yellow color here as well as uh, the green yard, green yard here to help to break the CO here. So basically you can think about this, this basically it's a nickel and the magnesium uh, work together to help to 
to promote the CH and the CO bond activation. All right, so uh, other thing, we also developed uh, some pincer carbodicarbin, which have a tridentate, uh, which is done by uh, my PhD student, uh, already graduate from uh, National Taiwan University that we able to make this uh, palladium of this uh, tridentate uh, uh, palladium here, right? And we can uh, use this as a catalyst to do carbon-carbon cost coupling reaction, uh, Suzuki uh, Miyaura carbon-carbon cost coupling. We also can use this uh, palladium catalyst to do the photoredox reaction. Right, so you shine a light, a blue light here, then you can do the this uh, aldehyde coupled with this uh, peperidine. This is uh, to generate the amide here. So um, I, I'll quickly, because of time, I, I can't really tell you the mechanism. Basically, uh, basically our palladium complex shine the light, right? And then it will generate a reactive palladium too. And then this re reactive palladium too, will react with the oxygen and create this uh, super, uh, super, super oxide. And this super oxide will generate the uh, hydrogen peroxide. And then this is uh, responsible for the generation of the amide uh, product here. All right, um, because of time, I'm going to quickly uh, go. But important here, I want to show you this. It's very uh, unique concept here because this is another type of tandem or multiple reaction that we try to incorporate the two electron with the one electron reaction here, right? Uh, so uh, you know that uh, uh, a lot of this uh, reaction is a two electron, but we also successfully incorporate a single electron transfer or the one electron. As you can see, we can do the carbon-carbon cost coupling reaction using uh, this palladium, um, uh, catalyst here to do the two electron and then subsequently we shine a light with, with for the CN cost coupling reaction with the one electron here. So uh, so I will move to like metal free catalysis here. Uh, again, uh, we know uh, nowadays a lot of people want uh, to do something that I not required to use uh, transition matter. So uh, here, this work actually done by one of my uh, Malaysian PhD student uh, that from uh, from Penang, okay, that he used the carbodicarbon to uh, do some uh, this very interesting uh, polymerization uh, reaction here. So um, the idea here, I will solve uh, maybe. Uh, show you that um, uh, here is, uh, here uh, you, you just have to know that uh, this carbon dicarbon, they actually have two reactive sites, right? The center carbon is a very nucleophilic, but this uh, carbon, which is near the NAC carbon here, this is a very electrophilic. So you have these two reactive sites actually help to do some sort of this uh, 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 reaction. Or, or perform a catalysis. So this is called the FLP or the fractured, frustrated Lewis pair here. Okay, so um, because of they have this two reactive site, um, they able to, to do the CO2 fixation. So they take, you take an amine here, react with the um, borane, the BABN here, and then we present of the one atmosphere of the CO2 and with our carbon dicarbon catalyst, be able to do the methylation. So basically your CO2 will become the metal here or metal here, right? So, uh, so this is very interesting. Not only that, uh, we also can actually uh, use this uh, strategy to uh, do the cyclotramization of the isocyanate, right? Uh, which one X to make a two X with our carbodicarbon catalyst without matter. Uh, also, we can use this carbodicarbon to do the polymerization of the lactic acid. So this uh, ring opening uh, lactic acid to make the PLA. And you can see we could do it very high conversion. And so basically this 
formalization can be can be done in around five minutes. And uh, not only we can do the uh, promization of the lactic acid of the LA, we also can do the uh, MMA. We take this uh, 500 equivalent of MMA in the presence of the carbon dicarbon catalyst and with the benzyl alcohol, we able to make a polymer. So, and finally, we also can use our carbon dicarbon to do the dehydrosylation for this benzyl alcohol here. As you can see here, uh, not only the benzyl alcohol, we also can do it in the steroid or the sugar here. But important here, I want to show you the concept here that the carbon dicarbon have this uh, two reactive side, the basicity side and the acidity side at this uh, carbon here. And then what we do in, in order to improve this reactivity, we put a benzyl alcohol here, as you can see, this benzyl alcohol is served as a modulator, right? To help to, to, uh, to uh, make this polymerization process uh, in a very good uh, uh, PDI. All right, so um, uh, finally, uh, I think I, I, I have other very uh, interesting carbodicarbon. Like for example, we can put two matter, uh, on the carbon dicarbon, right? This is very interesting. Uh, here we also can use carbon dicarbon to do a cross coupling reaction without using palladium. As you can see, we take this uh, aryl bromide and the benzyl alcohol, we can couple this reaction and then make this uh, compound here without the uh, palladium catalyst. All right, so um, I, I think I moved to the other chemistry recently. Uh, I think this is very excited chemistry, uh, but so far we haven't really find any new application, but uh, I, it's just a joke here. Uh, at that time, I think uh, in 2019, uh, our, uh, the academic cynical at that time, they, they discover the black hole, right? Uh, how the black hole uh, react. Uh, so they have this uh, like um, this uh, media uh, announcement, right? But at that time, this media announcement, what I see is uh, a two carbon, as you can see, there's a two carbon here, right? And then these two carbon are linked with each other. So with that, I, with this, uh, <laughs> this black hole here, I, what I see is a two carbon. So we decide to maybe look at whether we can um, use some sort of big ligand to isolate the two carbon or the dicarbon. And this work was uh, mostly done by my uh, postdoc uh, professor, uh, no, Dr. Liu Leong from the Hong Kong, right? Uh, and this work, uh, because of this work here, we able to, uh, for the first time, uh, we can isolate the dicarbon using a big phosphine ligand, and we uh, successfully published this work in nature chemistry. All right, so what is the two carbon here? And obviously two carbon is not very stable. They exist in a very high temperature. And uh, mostly you can detect this uh, dicarbon or two carbon in the comet ray, uh, right? And also some of the flame here. But a lot of people are way interested at the nature of this bonding of these uh, two carbon here. Some people argue it's a two double bond. Some people say this a triple bond with uh, maybe one uh, this uh, single electron uh, sitting on the each carbon. But some other people which they believe that not only is a triple bond, it, but is a quadruple bond, right? Um, so this quadruple bond is two sigma bond, two pi. And this was uh, being calculated by uh, Sher and Herbert T, uh, was published at that time at Nature Chemistry. And they believe that this uh, dicarbon have the quadruple bond. And obviously there's a lot of controversy uh, about whether this, that carbon is a quadruple bond. 
So, and because of that, many people try to isolate this dicarbon and in order to understand the fundamental uh, property of this, uh, uh, this species here. For example, like uh, Roski tried to use this uh, CA, CACC carbon to stabilize this uh, carbon here. Uh, but turn out this is not really a good uh, strategy because this actually become accumulate. So you can't really actually really understand the nature uh, bonding, uh, the bonding nature of this two carbon bond here. And then uh, subsequently, uh, Bertrand uh, uh, also tried to isolate the dicarbon by using a carbon and the matter here, right? So this is a, probably the first case that you can isolate the dicarbon with single uh, ligand, and then you need to have another matter to help, right? For our work here, basically we only use one ligand that to stabilize this dicarbon species here. So uh, we, we start this, actually uh, Dr. Leong has started this uh, chemistry by synthesizing this um, bis imanito uh, phosphine here, and then react with this uh, alkyne, green yard alkyne, and then generate this uh, compound two. This is a, a precursor. Right, and then using very strong base, remove the proton here, then uh, they subsequently able to obtain this dicarbon with a very big uh, phosphine ligand here. Right, we use the NMR catalyzed. We even have the X-ray crystal structure here. And uh, this crystal structure show that we have this uh, two carbon bond, bond uh, distance is about 1.237 angstrom. So this means the bond order is between the triple bond and the double bond or the SP to the SP2 hybridization. Um, so uh, we uh, also uh, obtained the help from Argeno uh, Franking uh, from UC of Marburg, um, as well as Lily Chow from uh, Nanjing Tech to help her to do some uh, computation to analyze the, this dicarbon. And <clears throat> they found that this uh, very interesting uh, feature here, this dicarbon, actually you can think about this dicarbon is basically is, uh, is have a bonding between the triple bond and the double bond. And it have two carbon character in this dicarbon here. This is uh, what they calculate. And uh, um, of course, uh, this is very unique. Uh, and uh, I will not say the uh, reactivity, but important here, I want to say that we're able to actually uh, to isolate uh, the dicarbon using one ligand. And, and of course, this uh, dicarbon is also uh, can be behave like the carbon or the six electron carbon here that they can stabilize the rhodium here and uh, it's a very electron rich carbon and we can use this ligand to perform some of the uh, reductive coupling reaction between the aldehyde and the alkyne. Okay, so uh, I think finally I want to show you something that uh, um, instead of giving a conclusion uh, is because uh, I think uh, you as a nano uh, center in UN, you do a lot of nanochemistry or the nanomaterial, right? So uh, recently I just actually uh, collaborate with uh, one uh, people from uh, NTU as well, National Chao Tong USC. Uh, we, uh, under this chemical bonding project here, we try to uh, put a nano metallic compound into a cage, right? Uh, so this is a cage we designed that have a uh, kind of large cavity. The cavity is roughly about uh, 4.5 nanometer, but the case size is about 7.5 uh, nanometer, right? This uh, very, this, uh, uh, so we call it as a cubic porous coordination cage. 
which uh, we use uh, cadmium and some of them are organic uh, ligand to make this cage here. All right. Um, and then we and then what we do is we try to uh, take the cage and try to uh, put the the nano uh, nanopadium particle into the cage. You can see this is a SM, SEM picture here of the cage here. And uh, we able to do that. Um, that, uh, that we could have the nanoparticle of the palladium was into the cage here. As you can see, we take a SEM, SEM picture here that you have the dot here, right? Which is about five nanometer. But if you have a naked platinum nanoparticle, this all this nano uh, uh, nano platinum particle will aggregate, as you can see here, and it's larger than five nanometer. So we are very confident that we successfully put the platinum nanoparticle into the cage. And and I, I want to show you this a uh, primary result that we able to do a chemo selectivity of this reaction here, right? Um, as you can see here, we um, could do the hydrogenation of the uh, olefin. Uh, we can do hydro hydrogenation of the aldehyde. Uh, not so, uh, uh, and then we also can do the hydrogenation of the uh, nitro here to make amine here. But important here is very selective, why? Because if we, take the, this uh, cage uh, with the palladium nanoparticle with the uh, hydrogen uh, atmosphere, we only selectively hydrogenated the nitro to amine, but not the aldehyde here. So, but if you use a naked palladium here, you will just hydrogenate the nitro and the aldehyde here. So I think this is a very, very cool, right? Uh, so uh, this is a, recent project here and we are uh, plan to actually write a manuscript and we hope that we can uh, uh, have a very high impact paper for this work here. Okay, finally, I just want to uh, thank you, uh, my coworker. I think people are the most important uh, when you try to do a good research here. And uh, finally, I just want to show here uh, the I think this is a very uh, inspiring book. I read um, that um, David versus a Gaulian, right? I, I, I think that David are uh, a small guy, right? And the Gaulian is a, a giant. And then uh, we, sometimes we are small guy. We need to, we need to, uh, we need to, you know, behave like David, how we can become a small guy to beat uh, the big giant stuff, right? So I think the, the idea here is if you, are, if you are not with a really huge good or the huge, huge resources, sometimes you think how to adapt the situation and it, you need to be flexible too. And with the creativity that will allow you to actually uh, become uh, 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 strong, okay? Well, uh, thank you very much for your attention and I welcome uh, any question uh, uh, raised for my work here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ong, for uh, your very inspiring talk. Uh, open to the floor if you have question to Professor Ong. Professor Ong, may I ask a question regarding the dicarbon? Yes. Is it stable to isolate? The, how stable is the crystal? Um, carbon? The carbon zero, uh, maybe I put it this way, uh, is easy for you. The carbon zero basically are not very uh, stable against uh, moisture or the oxygen. So basically most of the work we had to actually manipulate uh, using the, in, in the presence of the nitrogen. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, we uh, actually done our experiment in the uh, glow box mm. that uh, with the nitrogen atmosphere. However, if you uh, however if you uh, coordinate to the transition matter, they are actually quite stable. Yeah, under the air. Wow, I call it uh, matter stable. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Is there any question from the floor? As usual, I think this is the Malaysian's culture. We are too shy to ask questions. Maybe they will oh, ask you through the email. <laughs> I, I think plus the, the thing is, um, it just is a virtue. That's why I don't like virtue. Um, because uh, um, yeah, you, you can't really, really have a physical interaction. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, eye contact, right? So, so sometimes it's very tough, actually. Um, but uh, hopefully, we hope that thing will get better in next year, right? Uh, and, and maybe I, we, I, I will come to visit your nano center, right? Uh, I mean, uh, that's why I hope. Right, and I assume most of you have already took a vaccination, right? So, uh, and uh, I think we should be actually okay, yeah. <laughs> well, even we get infected. Yeah. There is a question from the from the chat box, uh, Prof Ong. Will there be any efforts to stabilize the dicarbon carbon species that you have made? Um. This uh, well, uh, well, the the thing is, I I mean, if we try to make very very stable uh, di, I mean the carbon dicarbon or the carbon, right? Then uh, it will be not so reactive. If we are not so reactive, then uh, it's not so useful. If you want to do catalysis, right? Even they are not stable, but they, they are useful. For example, uh, uh, we can actually use the carbon dicarbon to do a promization, right? Uh, we, while well, we add a benzoyl alcohol, the, the thing is very surprised to us is that the carbon dicarbon actually is stable uh, in the presence of the benzoyl alcohol. So, um, to answer uh, the question whether we can uh, try to uh, have a maybe effort to stabilize the dicarbon uh, species, maybe not. Oh, wow, well, not maybe not in uh, near future because uh, if we try to stabilize, that means uh, it, it will not be uh, reactive, and then uh, we, we can't really uh, use a reactive. Uh, is reactive uh, feature to explore uh, new catalysis. Yeah. I hope I answered the question. <laughs> yeah. Um, Prof. Wong, regarding the, the incorporations of palladium into a cage, um, a cage system, uh -huh. why is it? Uh, and, uh, and necessary to introduce a cage system for the palladium catalyst. Oh yeah, I, I'm sorry because of the time, I didn't really uh, uh, describe in detail. And plus the thing is, uh, um, we, we want this thing uh, published first before we actually uh, tell the whole story because uh, we, we want to actually, we believe that this work here are uh, I have a very high impact that we possible we actually can uh, publish this work in uh, in in maybe uh, nature theory paper right? maybe like nature chemistry or or na nature material so that's why we we kind of a little bit conservative to tell you more about that but um, in regarding to your question why we want to put a nanoparticle in the cage. Well, there's a several reasons. Uh, the first reason is 
uh, that um, we want to protect the nanoparticle. Uh, I mean, most of the nanoparticle, once they do the, the uh, catalysis, the cat Kelly reaction, right? They will aggregate, right? And then they will actually render your, your nano catalyst uh, not able to do anything, right? So the idea is we want to, uh, uh, to prevent the aggregation and to also to uh, reduce the possibility that the, the, the nano catalyst uh, become deactivated. That's why we use a cage to protect it. Uh, second reason, uh, of course, is uh, we want to use the cage uh, that maybe have different kind of the chemical environment or physical environment uh, to help us to do something that cannot be done by the uh, naked nanoparticle. Uh, that's a reason, maybe to the, the size exclusion uh, uh, or maybe to other uh, uh, reason. That's a reason why we use a cage. But, obvi uh, but obviously, when you put a cage on to your nanoparticle, the reactivity or the rate of the reaction is going to be reduced a lot. I mean, but uh, for our case here, we want to show you that a new concept of the chemo selective selectivity, right? So uh, we can use a cage uh, to actually to to um, to selectively do the hydrogenation on the one particular functional group instead of all the functional group. So that's just the idea here, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Prabhu. Somebody asked me, um, is the cage structure is stable? Uh, we are not sure. Uh, we are in the process of to see whether the structure is stable. Uh, well, but I, I can't say it's very stable because it's, uh, this uh, cage it actually consists of uh, this uh, ligand, right, uh, that have this uh, coordination with the cadmium complexes. So they actually have this uh, dynamic feature here. So we believe that they are not really stable well, it's matter stable, but the, the, the cage maybe it could be uh, can be opened up and then closed. So it's uh, in the dynamic because of the they have this uh, the coordination uh, uh, between the matter and the periodic, right? So the, the cage is a dynamic. And uh, in fact, we don't want to have this uh, very robust structure because uh, we don't want, we you know, make ourselves different from the moth the met, uh, metallic, the metallic organic framework. So we want to make ourselves uh, uh, different. So that's why we want to have our structure is have some sort of the dynamic uh, uh, reversibility. They can open up and then close up, something like that. Yeah. I hope I answered the question. Thank you, uh, Ida, right? Thank you. Hi, Leo. Hi, hi, Prabhupong. Nice, yeah. nice to see you here. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah, it's virtual. <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah. I hope you visit Malaysia soon, like next year. I, I hope so. Uh, the problem is, um, uh, it's not. I worry. I get infected. I'm, I'm not worried because I did, uh, I did take a vaccination. Right. So I'm not worried about that. But it's just a problem. Uh, the quarantine. Right, uh, Taiwan still have this uh, very uh, long quarantine. Like you need to have like almost three week quarantine. Right, you two week in uh, this quarantine hotel, and then maybe another seven day you had to self quarantine yourself in the house. Right, so like almost it took like a month. Right, almost a month. Right, you can't do anything. That's the reason why. Uh, I did not go back to Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. almost one, one month for the quarantine period. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah, that's the reason. Yeah. But hopefully next year. Lah. But for the yeah. for the case structure, I think a lot of people are very interested 
suggested for that is because like uh, it is it's quite a trendy technology. Okay. But for the case structure, for example, uh, what's the potential application for that? It's just like just now you mentioned can be open and closed system. So I, yeah. Well, I I don't want to kind of like how to say I don't want to kind of speculate too much and and create a new hope, right? But I, I don't like that. It just we we thought uh we want to do something that is different from moth, right? Uh, you know moth, right? I really know moth. Uh, moth right now is a very hot topic, right? Uh, people try to use moth and then try to in encapsulate the uh, nanoparticle, right? So uh, we want to be different. So more once you encapsulate the nanoparticle, you will just trap inside, right? But but our idea here is one we want to have a dynamic cage, which could open up and and close, right? Depend on the external environment, right? The stimuli, whether the the environment, like for example, in a solution, whether they will favor the uh, the open up the structure or, or 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 something like that. So we want to see something that different, right? Uh, so that's um, but possibility for other thing. I don't know. I I'm not sure yet until we really understand the this uh this dynamic uh, behavior of between the 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 this uh, porous uh, coordination cage with the nanoparticle. Right, but, but but we have a, a very unique uh, chemo chemo selectivity, which we are now very excited about that. Uh, sorry, I can't tell you so much because we, okay. we okay. yeah yeah. yeah but we, we we aim now want to have a big paper, so I we we kind of worry about our competitor. So sorry, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. Doctor Chi, back back to you. I think John got some pro uh, questions. Yeah, thank you, Leo. Uh, yeah, Dr. John asked about the question, what is the mechanism of the palladium embedded in the cage? Sorry? Uh, uh, can you the, repeat? What is the mechanism of the palladium embedded oh. in the case? Oh, how the palladium actually get into the cage? Yeah. Right. Um, well, it's not really uh, any rocket, any difficult mechanism. Basically, we we just uh, we just um, you know uh, dissolve a, a solution of the uh, maybe uh, palladium two, right? Uh, a solution of palladium two in, well, in the organic solution, right? And and then we uh and then we throw some of this cage into the uh, organic solution, and then we use a, a reductant a sodium uh, boron hydride. I believe it's a sodium boron hydride uh, that reduces uh, palladium two to palladium zero, and this palladium zero for some reason maybe like the um, polar aromatic ring of the cage, right? So you just maybe physically, uh, you know, uh, deposit there and it become maybe a seed, allow other uh, palladium atom to crystallize into the cage. That's is, I believe, I, I don't know. That is what we current uh, believe about how the palladium uh, actually uh, make a nanoparticle side in the cage, yeah, and yep, that that's it. Yes. Wow, well, thanks, uh, Juan. Right, thank you. Nice to meet you, Juan. You you just try to be right. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Prof. Right. <laughs> yeah, I I hope I answer your question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. Uh, I just wondering the mechanism so we can manipulate. How many? How was the size of the particle that we intend to make? For example, can we make one nano, uh, two well, nano? Yeah, this kind well, of. Well, uh, this is the uh, one of the other goal. Well, at this point, uh, we make this. Uh, the size of the our cage is about like seven nanometer, right? And then the cavity is roughly about four nano, 
uh, nanometer, right? Uh, in fact, uh, you look at our SEM just now, I show you is about five nano, or about around five nanometer. So I we believe that is the correct size here, but uh, well, it, it depends if we can make a cage to two nanometer. Yes, of course we can make uh, one, but I, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of tough to use organic uh, ligand uh, to actually make a two nano, uh, two nano particles. So I don't know how to do that. The other way, I, I, I think is maybe we can uh, have a cavity this decorate with something right inside. Perhaps we can reduce it to two nanometer. I don't know. Yeah. Um, this is uh, so far we haven't really uh, pursued that approach yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... Is there any more questions from the floor? So, uh, Professor Ravi is not here today. Yeah. Uh, your director not not here. Yeah. Okay. Just send my regard to Professor Ravi. Um, sure, uh, uh, I I hope that I can see him soon. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and uh, say I just want to say hi to Lee. Uh, Lee. Li Ying Ki, okay. It's a it's a chemistry, right? He did organic chemistry. I, I think I will or the KM Lee, I don't know which one. The KM Lee um uh from the chemistry department, yeah. It's totally Li Ying Ki from chemistry department. Okay, all right. I I yeah. All right, good. Um so I just send my regard and uh well we oh yeah, we have this uh the Asian coordination chemistry will be held uh, around August, right? Um, may, maybe you could uh, think about that uh, if you want to uh, attend the meeting, right? Uh, so I will give a talk uh, in this uh, in Taipei, right? So hopefully we can travel. Yep. Okay, so thank you very much. And um, I think uh, it's wonderful to see you guys. And uh, and thanks again, Chief, for uh, organize the the talk here. I'm uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Prof Ong. Yeah. Uh, please join me to thank Prof Ong Delkan uh, for his wonderful uh, lecture today. Thank you. Thank you.